do care about the truth. And the truth is that the media has lied to us about Donald Trump. I know this because for a long time I believed those lies, so I'm here to set the record straight. The first person I knew who supported Donald Trump was my father. I was shocked. My entire family is racially diverse, and I believed the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies, and I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> I realize Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. Hey guys, my name is Devory Darkins. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Amber Rose speech that she gave at the 2024 RNC and all this backlash that Matt Walsh is getting because his take about it. Now, before we go any further, understand who she is. Uh, she is best known because of who she's dated in the past, like rappers and athletes. Um, she's definitely one of those women who put up provocative pictures. She does have an OnlyFans account, you know, and she does have children. So that's who she is. And you know who she reminds me of? A lot of the modern women of today. Right. And so I really do believe whoever is in charge of the RNC, probably Laura Trump. Right. But whoever is in charge of this event in particular and whoever is deciding who comes up on stage and speaks, I think they know what they're doing. And I think Matt Walsh is really just reading into this too much. Sometimes you're too smart and your takes are just it goes over people's head and, and it becomes more serious than it really is. And so before I give you guys my take about it and, and everything, um, and play the video, you guys already know what to do, like, share, and subscribe, play the video. That's when it hit me. These are my people, this is where I belong. <laughs> so I let go of my fear of judgment, of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, and I put the red hat on too. Thank you. Love you too. I never felt more free and more love for my country than I do now. I want to thank my father, who's in the audience tonight, for opening my eyes. He served over 20 years in the U.S. military. Thank you for your service, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you. When I met the president and Melania for the first time, he was kind and generous and funny as hell. <laughs> Very funny. The first lady was gracious and smart with a smile that will brighten up any room. Yeah, so she's not really saying anything of any controversy. She's basically saying everything that everyone already knows. But the difference is her background, the way she looks, where she comes from, and she still arrived at the same destination, that the best way forward for our country is to elect Donald Trump. And so before we get into why would they ever have someone like that on stage? Why would they have someone who has a tattooed on their forehead? You know what you sound like? You sound like someone who's very judgmental. And that's the difference between the left and the right. See, the right, we're not looking to judge people. We just believe this is the way it is. This is what gets results. If you want to bang your head against that and not agree, fine. But the left is like, no, we want to change legislation to make you think like us. Right. And they spend a lot of time judging and hating. And so just the reaction on this, I think, is 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 pretty crazy. So she didn't really say anything that I thought was out of this world. So let's actually take a look at what Matt Walsh had to say um, about this, unfortunately. So um, 
his take was this. The RNC gives a prime time speaking slot to a pro-abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slut with a face tattoo whose only claim to fame is having sex with rappers. Truly an embarrassment on a single voter will be mobilized by this person. So clearly he's triggered over this. He definitely disagrees with, uh, you know, the RNC having her on stage. But I think what he's failing to realize is something very simple is that the RNC is four days and like eight hours long. So, you know, there's plenty of people that can speak. Right. And I think the way they're going about it is they're bringing every corner of our nation on that stage. They're going to bring black people, Indian people, Asian people, Hispanic people, OnlyFans people. <laughs> right. I mean, they're going to bring it all because they want to show the American people that MAGA Republicans is not some blonde, blue eyed hillbilly in the country somewhere that people who support Donald Trump come in all shapes and sizes, skin colors, religious backgrounds, tall, short, only fans, not only fans, you know, uh, all of that. Right. And so he's he's looking way past that and, and he's going into the judgmental um, mindset. And so let's actually take a couple more uh, look at his takes, which he just doubles down is what ends up happening, by the way. Anyway, so here's his follow up to that initial um, post on X and it's pretty lengthy. So I'll give you guys the too long didn't read. Basically, what he is saying here is that the juice is not worth the squeeze. He does not think it's worth having her on stage. He does not believe she's going to attract votes. He, he doesn't believe any of that. Right. He just believes this is a bad look. It doesn't make sense. It's stupid. And that's his take. So one of the things I want to read to you guys is this part right here. He says, he says, uh, there are many examples or there are many, many examples of conservatives rallying around their new celebrity hero just because the person likes Trump, only to be humiliated and betrayed by that same person shortly after. This happens countless times. I've called it ahead of time in nearly every case and been screamed at by conservatives the way you are all screaming at me now. Hopefully this is the first time I'll be wrong about it, about something like this, but I highly doubt it. Now, here's the bottom line, Matt. And and if anyone else feels the same way about Amber Rose, that's fine. You don't have to like her. You don't have to agree with the de decision, okay? You don't have to at all. Well, what you do have to understand is this. What is something good about this situation? Mindset, again, what is something good about bringing her on stage and having her speak? How many people look like her, right? How many people with her background exist in this country today? There's a good amount of people. There is a good amount of people. And furthermore, just to show the receipts, right? Let's actually check out her ex account so you guys can get a, a clear indication of how many people follow her, right? She's got 3.6 million followers on X, okay? 3.6 million. OK, and then if we go take a look at her Instagram, she has what, 24 million followers. Right. So clearly, um, who knows if they're all real. Right. That, that's not what I'm trying to figure out here. But what I am saying is the point that I'm saying is she is someone that people do follow. She is someone that represents a percentage of this country. There are women who do things just like she does that did not like Trump, that believes Trump is a racist because that's what the media has told them. She represents the idea that no matter who you are, you may have been a person that believed everything that the media said. You believe everything that the left told you. And when you finally got up and did some freaking research, you realize everything that they're saying is a bunch of lies. Now, here's the thing. How do you find out about a person and their character and who they really are? All you have to do is get people's feedback when they were talking to that person in private. We used to have a thing in the in the military. It was it's called integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. OK, that's what integrity in the military is. So when no one's watching, how does Donald Trump behave then? And there has been plenty of footage, plenty of studies, articles, publications, documentaries showing his character and I have yet to see anything in there that leads me to believe that he's what the media says he is now is he perfect absolutely not none whatsoever but I tell you what 
you know the type of person he is when he walks in the room and he shakes every single person's hand, looks them in the eye, and gets into a conversation with them. Now, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you did something like that? Because I think about that sometimes with, with, with myself. I'm like, man, when's the last time I went into a room and I literally talked to every single person and wanted to know them, right? I, I, I'll be honest, that's, I'm introverted. I, I don't, that's probably one of my, my weaknesses, right? But that is something that really separates him. And so, you know, the media is in here and involved in all of this and they're, and they're doing it to their own benefit. They wanna twist the narrative. They're on the left. They believe in these progressive policies. So whoever threatens that is going to be attacked by the media. But the unfortunate part, that does not mean just the media. Sometimes you're going to have conservatives who just don't see it, right? And Matt Walsh, unfortunately, is one of them. Now, let's check out what CNN had to say about this. Now, if CNN likes it, I mean, that might mean something there, right? Let's take a look. I mean, it's fascinating to, to have her as a speaker there. I think she has some 20-odd million Instagram followers. 23 million Instagram followers. So I just have to say, the stagecraft, the sequencing of this, this whole moment tonight, this is what Donald Trump does best. He's the producer in chief, him walking out, Lee Greenwood playing. And then first you're hearing from an everyday American talking, but then a social media influencer with 23 million followers who young people are looking at and young voters are up for grabs this election. Throw in there also, Donald Trump is now a meme everywhere. You know, best not miss if you're going to shoot the king. Like, this is what is on TikTok. This is what tens of millions of young voters who are not necessarily decided, they don't have longstanding party affiliation, are seeing. He's making a play there. It, it's it's very smart. And to be honest, she's one of the most effective communicators we've seen tonight. Yeah, she's, she's definitely spot on about that. She definitely was great at communicating. Um, and... That, that is a very interesting take about the younger voters, right? They're not really affiliated with anyone. Um, I do believe a lot of young voters do have, they're more likely to flock towards progressive policies because they've yet to do true research and live <laughs> or have like life experience, like a mortgage and family and, and, and go through that whole experience. But a lot of them are smart. You know, the younger generation is not stupid, you know, and they definitely feel like their verse, their voice has not been heard and they've been gaslit by the president right because when they're when the president is coming out and saying well the economy is great you think someone 18 year old actually believes that no so you know she she definitely has a line of communication uh with the younger generation so i looked it up and then i called a friend of mine and i said do you know who this is and they didn't know also a political person but that's the point they, they have put someone on the stage who reaches into this whole group of Americans who are not necessarily engaged at all in our politics or in our civics. Mm -hmm. These kinds of voices, I heard some grousing about this from some of the conservative, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is how you change the composition of the electorate. Yeah, I, I, um, that, that was probably the most dangerous uh, speak for the Democratic coalition. That is a young woman of color. She's describing the experience a lot of people have, feeling that mm -hmm. maybe if you're around too many liberals, you might get criticized too much or you might not be able to speak your mind. And she spoke to it really well. And she's way more famous than any of us up here. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that. Way more famous. And so uh, to the extent that these guys are trying to, to bust up our coalition, that was a, a, a bunker buster right there. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time you agreed with Van Jones, right? And I agree with Van Jones on this. Right. She's definitely famous in all of them. There's no question. And she definitely represents, like I said, you got like I told you guys at the beginning of the video, she represents a lot of women right now that are young. OK, they're out there doing their own thing, getting their own money and they have their own kids and they're not married. That's who she is. And they do OnlyFans. There's a lot of women out there that do OnlyFans just like she does and believes that Donald Trump is a racist. But now they're going to hear from her and her perception. And that actually might make a difference. There are speakers who speak to the room, and there are speakers who speak yeah. through the television screen. She speaks through the camera to the to the audience at home. Not, I mean, she's effective in the room, but when you're yelling into the room, that is not communicating directly yeah. through the. the lens. Th this person is super talented. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this person knows how to speak plainly and directly. Knows how to use the camera, uh, the cadence of it. She, they got something there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. When CNN is saying that it's a good idea, I think Matt Walsh has it wrong. That's just my mindset about it.
And I think we, you know, have said it a thousand different ways. Um, and by the way, if you haven't been watching, the it's not just her. There's regular Americans. They're no names. You've never heard of them. You don't even know their story. They brought them on stage. Different color, different looks, male and female. And like I said in the beginning, the RNC knows what they're doing. They're trying to go out there and, and show that ma like people who support Trump, people who believe in this MAGA movement are not what the media are saying they are. OK, and they don't look like the, the way that the media says that they look. OK, I'm a prime example of that. So that is my mindset about this entire story. What about yours? What do you think about Matt Walsh's take on this? What do you think about Amber Rose's speech? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What do you think about CNN's take on this or mine? Answer this and more in the comment section below. I want to say thank you so much for checking out the video today. I'll see you in the next one.